You're saying that the move isn't as drastic as it maybe seems right now because OPEC countries aren't producing as much oil as they can currently. Uh, absolutely right, Frank. Uh, that two million is not production. It's the capacities that were available or reported to be available. But then it turned out that Angola, Nigeria, and some of the others just don't have a million barrels of that too. So the only cut that we and our consultancy come up with is about 900,000 barrels. And that's uh, required because, frankly, the futures markets were in severe uh, backwardation. Uh, the open positions uh, on oil futures were way down as low as 2015. No capital coming into the industry. And it was running the risk of, uh, of having a shortage of supply without more capital. That's what it was all about. Uh, the agreement that OPEC uh, had arrived at, OPEC uh, Plus, back in April, runs out in September. And they had to renew it. And that's why they had this meeting now. It's uh, taking us through 2023. Gives us uh, a lot of uh, clarity as to where the markets are headed. So uh, overall, I think it was a very uh, appropriate and uh, necessary meeting. And the conclusion is actually to protect the market, including the U.S. Uh, shale oil and the oil industry all over the world, the energy industry, in fact, even the gas. So uh, this is uh, a more or less of a uh, security for the long term for energy supplies. All right, Dr. Hussein, we're looking at some charts right now. Brent crude uh, up about five or six percent over the last week. Is that the kind of upside that we should expect uh, or, or you see bigger, more dramatic moves when it comes to oil going forward after these cuts? Well, Frank, uh, the, the problem, the cuts are just a small piece of what's happening. The rest of it are the uh, caps on the oil sales from Russia, uh, the uh, situation in China and how fast can it and will it recover, uh, the production capacity from uh, other energy supplies that have to fill in the rest of the energy pie. Uh, I'm talking about gas, I'm talking about coal. So all of those uh, have to weigh in. I suspect that the uh, $95 uh, to $90 is the long-term uh, price that we will be seeing probably through 2023. All right, so we're going to see some stability going forward to here. You kind of took some words out of my mouth a second ago. Um, why did OPEC feel the need to do these cuts when the thought is, at least right now, that China's about to reopen and demand's going to spike if and when China does reopen? Look, uh, we work with numbers, and the EIA, the U.S. Energy Information Administration, was showing in its short-term outlook uh, that supply was exceeding demand already uh, by 2 million barrels as of now, and the outlook was for more excess supply. So rather than wait for a, a collapse in markets or a, a flood of oil supplies, they're edging into it. Now, every two months, they will look at it. And in December, they will again revisit the subject. And if uh, there's a need for more oil, I'm sure they'll react. If, on the other hand, the global economy goes into a tailspin, well, they may have to do the other things and, and cut back a little more. Uh, they're monitoring it very carefully. I think that's what uh, Prince Abdelaziz was saying. That's what uh, the Secretary General, uh, Mr. Reis, was saying. Uh, they're going to track it very carefully.